you're visiting me today in my studio based here in the Mission. It's just great to walk around because inspiration is literally around the corner and it's so vibrant with color and letter forms that it just makes it for a great place to, to be a creative. So behind me is the Casa Maria, just local bodega here. I think it's probably one of my favorite signs here located in the Mission. I love it. Absolutely love it. What's really cool is that you have a lot of these type of grocery stores in the neighborhood. And what's awesome to see is each one's different. Each one has its own lettering style. Some are brighter than others. Others have been repainted about a hundred times. But each time you see it, you know, there's a lot of history in it because they've repainted the letters. They've added more color to make it pop, even though it's probably getting faded by the sun. And to me, there's just so much personality in each one of these letter forms. Each one has its like really unique, just really unique character to it. And I love how like the cap height is really close to the X height, especially on the Casa Maria script. And that they're wedging it in there so it works in that holding shape, that triangle. And the fact is that they're throwing in like a pretty wide sans serif too. And the crossbar on the A and the fact that the weight on either one of those A's are you know, different as well as the X height. But it's so endearing and it's so charming to know that it was sign painted. It just feels totally just so charming and so approachable. And like, I don't know, I don't, I don't, I wouldn't put that type of layout together or those type of numerals with that type of condensed sans serif, but for whatever reason, because it's probably painted by, it's painted by hand that all all those different styles work pretty well together. And like across the street, you have this Salon y Clinica. Those are all pretty wonky. Like it's got inverted stress, uh, some numbers and type, or some letters are thicker than others, but it's like so charming. The fact that it's weathered and it's added texture, again, adds so much like fun personality to it. And what's funny is like, you know, I pass by all these signs every day to work. So of course, the things that I'm seeing here are totally gonna influence the letters that I draw for projects. So, you know, you can do the same thing. It's just observing what's around you. They don't necessarily need to be sign painted to have some personality to it, but uh, just looking around and it's, you know, all around you. And again, documenting it, cause it's might not be there tomorrow when you walk past it. I don't know, this is a perfect example between new and old and what's happening more and more in this neighborhood is that a lot of the old signs are getting replaced with the new signs. At least these guys managed to keep the old and new together, but I don't think it takes much for you to understand probably which one I have a preference for. <laughs> one is so inviting where the other one comes off being so cold. It's kind of amazing how quickly this would, this stands out versus say something that's been designed or cut out of vinyl. Uh, the fact that there's so many layers upon it, you can be across the street and just notice it. And those are the things that I'm most attracted to. The ones that look slightly off kilter, that over the years have evolved into different shapes and letter forms are what attract me the most. And always makes me want to get a little bit closer to investigate it a little bit further. I like to draw inspiration straight from the source. I love picking up things from flea markets or a lot of the stuff I find from eBay or online. So it's really fun to kind of go out into the real world and come across these things. A lot of these things I've seen online as well, but it's really fun to see it in person and to get a really good idea of how color is working and kind of how these things have been printed because that is also a way that can work inspiration into your project. Very minimal colors, or color overlapping and just kind of picking up on those details will really make your final look have a more vintage appeal. So this is something I see these everywhere and I'm pretty sure I've got that I got this for like three bucks at a flea market. But what I really love is the way that the cylinder works with the design. So it's like depending on what angle you're even looking at this guy, Thomas Edison, or looking at this beautiful lettering or this trademark and other kind of information that could be like super fun if you want to do something like this but the top has a little like thing on it that's really awesome 
and it has his signature all the way around. I love when signatures are included. I always pick up on that and it's something I really want to include, but when I do it myself, it feels super forced. So if you can in include a signature in a way that uh, makes sense, that's awesome. Uh, I also really love picking up vintage pencil packaging because I love pencils and these boxes are just so cool. They don't make them like this anymore. And this one's really fun. These are the kind of pencils you um, sharpen by tearing away the paper. And the illustrator came up with these little unwind elves, which are really hilarious. And I love the pattern just created by the logo repeating. Um, like if you want to create a one kind of focal point of an illustration or some kind of fun lettering here and then the rest is just a pattern of lettering repeating that always looks awesome. I love this one just because it's so simple and I just love this turquoise with the white. It doesn't have as much detail as some of the other things have but sometimes it's nice to either like incorporate something really really simple like this but maybe with a more detailed border or just because it has like illustration that makes it extra special. These kind of labels are something you can get on eBay really, really inexpensive. These are actually embossed. I'm just super inspired by the colors and then this like red splash right here. I'm in love with this little snowdrop mint tin. I just, I'm obsessed with the color. And I really love the, it's a different kind of style. It's not so detailed and ornate. And this is something I love kind of working with this style. Like even when something is really simple, it has like this modern look, but you can kind of tell right away that it has this, that is vintage because it's working with this like fun detail and little borders here. I also just love like just really weird things like this spelling book and this student decided not to spell any words, but <laughs> just this old paper. I love uh, finding things like this and some days I'll take a paper from this and do sketches on it because sketching on vintage kind of found paper makes your sketches look really great. <laughs> so when you're going out and collecting this kind of stuff for yourself, just basically pick up anything that really just pops up to you and you're like, this is just like rich with lettering design or it's just rich with like there's something unique about it, pick it up or photograph it if it's like a, an expensive thing. But like, I do think eBay can be somewhere great for you to pick up stuff like this. Like I got this tin on eBay for a couple bucks. So start collecting this kind of inspiration and compiling it into a mood board or your table and photographing it and just somewhere where you can focus on the details. I would like to show you a couple of sites and places um, where I look for inspiration from my work. I have two sites that I would like to share with you. So Vernacular Typography is a project by um, Molly Woodward. And um, I assume she lives in New York because she has a pretty extensive archive of typography in New York, uh, divided in different categories. For instance, um, she has gold lettering, so you can Scroll, scroll through all the different types of gold uh, lettering in New York and you can have more or less an overview of which letter shapes are used on this um, technique. Some pictures are better than others but um, the the archive is pretty extensive. You have also, for instance, neon and lights. Um, so you can already see a difference, how, how the material that is used to build that sign is affecting the letter shapes, right? Uh, this is pretty interesting to see. There's a lot of other categories. Um, I would also like to show you typography in other places, in France, for instance. And it's pretty interesting to see how the lettering is uh, speaking about the identity of that place and how letter shapes are starting to have a relationship to each other. 
and how they also change according to the material they are made of. Whether they are made of metal or wood or neon as we just saw. So this is a pretty interesting one to go through. Um, there's another one that I really like. Uh, this is uh, Chromiography. It's a project by Stephen Coles and it's a collaborative project where everyone can actually submit pictures. And what I find really interesting from this is, this, is that it's, it's very specific. It uh, collects only pictures of the chromes found on the cars. Um, and I found um, incredible that um, they are so different from each other, um, although they are using the same material and they are used for the same purpose, um, just to name as a name tag for that car. And what I also find pretty interesting from this is to um, to see how they relate to, they relate to, to the car and how they express a certain feature of that car, whether that car is fast or um, modern or um, very um, fancy or whether that, that car is uh, fam for, family, for families or a family car. So by using the same material, the possibilities are uh, multiple or infinite. Rather than simply borrowing from the past, I try to add my own perspective or personality to what inspires me. My work is informed by all of the reference that I've been collecting for as long as I've been a designer, maybe even longer. My sources are flea markets, secondhand bookstores, and Italian eBay. Lots of sources are free. I'm always photographing signs or scavenging orange wrappers that have fallen to the ground in produce markets. Anything with Italian or French type on it has always been magical to me. My studio is a walk-in archive of all the restaurant menus, business cards, matchbooks, and specialty food packages that I have designed or collected. I keep a lot of the materials in binders on my bookshelves so that just by spinning around in my chair, I can come face to face with endless inspiration that I never get tired of, that I will use directly or indirectly as reference. Designing fonts is my latest exploration. For years, I was interested in designing only the characters I needed for a logo or a book and nothing more. But now I've reached the point where I would like to share these letter forms with others. The first is Mardell, which was made both digitally and in wood based on Italian futurist letter forms. And then Montecatini, based on hand-lettered Italian posters from the Art Nouveau period, or Stile Liberty, as it's called in Italy. On my first trip to Montecatini, I came back with a poster. It was a, a reproduction of a, a poster done in the early 1900s that simply said Montecatini, and there was a little bit of other type on it. But I loved the letter form so much, and it was something that was an inspiration to me for years and years. And I finally decided to research those letters further into other posters from that period, and that was the inspiration for the font, which is distinctive because, especially because it has a lot of special ligatures that were very commonly used at that point in history. There are so many fonts out there right now for the world to enjoy that it's, it's difficult to choose a font that, that, that I want to spend months working on. This one that we used from Montecatini was unique enough, and especially because of the ligatures and because of its history. As wonderful as the Stile Liberty or Art Nouveau style of Italy uh, was, it made room later in the 20s and 30s for Art Deco, which is a, another distinctive period in type history that I'm very, very fond of. I love French and Italian Deco, mostly because the letter forms are very bold and sexy and beautiful, and I never get tired of using them. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to like and subscribe to stay up to date on all of our latest videos.